All right, welcome everybody here back to the show. Uh, I'm very pleased to be joined by Flyers legendary PA announcer, Lou Nolan, over 50 years with the team. Uh, Lou, th thanks again. Thanks so much for doing this. I really do appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk with me today. Happy to do it, Chris. Glad to be on the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, just, just kind of starting off, uh, you were, you know, you're, 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 you're basically a hockey lifer. Uh, you've been in the game for a long time. Um, how did you kind of, I think you've described it before as, as just being a rink rat. How did that kind of, you know, turn into you, um, you know, being the uh, PA announcer for Flyers? Yeah, well, uh, in grade school, uh, a colleague of mine, um, in my class, uh, his uncle was a goal judge for a minor league team that was that was in the arena at 46th and Market in West Philly. Mm -hmm. So uh, on Friday nights, you know, we're eighth graders and we go up there and I had a ba background. I used to watch the original six on TV when it was on. So um, George Leonard and I would go in with his uncle George and we'd go up. He'd take us up and he just let us be and we ran around uh, the arena there. And, um, you know, when it was over, uh, we hooked up with him, and uh, he drove us home and brought home the broken sticks, which we then fixed, taped up, glued, whatever, nailed, and uh, played street hockey behind the school on a brand newly um, surfaced street. So it was perfect for uh, for skates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, just kind of going off of that, how did you kind of get into hockey like like before that like like when you were you know younger and things like that was it just like you turned the TV on and, and you just fell in love with it? I guess you know it's a long time ago. Uh, mm. uh, I don't really remember exactly how, other than there weren't a lot of options on television, right? Uh, you know, and um, I guess we got to the point where uh, I was just wanted to uh, uh, watch something, and it turned out to be ice hockey, and I just naturally got to it. Right. And uh, it, it may have happened, uh, you know, that was in grade school. So it may have been on the other side of it. I, I may have gotten involved with it based on going up to that rink. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was before or after, but it happened. And, um, you know, that that led to some other things. And and here we are. That's awesome. Um, on on, uh, on Nancy Knuckles, uh, when you were on recently, I think I think it was around April last year. Uh, you mentioned before that, that you were, um, around for the Philadelphia Ramblers. Is there anything that you remember about them? Oh, sure. Uh, uh I remember that, um, and there wasn't any glass around the rink. There was cyclone fence, mm. uh, that the goal judges, uh, when the lights would not work, would wave towels. And, um, uh, you know, I, I was running around the whole time. So right. we skated after. Uh, you know, after the game, they opened it up and fans could skate. So uh, we did that, and uh, it was it was what I knew. It was beautiful, you know. I mean, all I saw was television, so right. the place was beautiful because it was actual. It's like the first time you walk into, you know, a major league ballpark, and the grass is there and it smells great and all. It was like that. So yeah, uh, that was basically the experience. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I mean, and especially too because. You know, like, like like growing up then and, and everything, like, you know, obviously a lot of teams bounced around and there was a lot of minor league teams. W like like when the Flyers were starting, did you ever think that, that they would actually like work out? Because I think because that was a big concern then was, you know, if the Flyers could eventually end up becoming a team since, you know, hockey wasn't that big in Philadelphia before that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I used to go to Margate in the summers and um, I noticed on 42 there, the freeway, there was a billboard and said the Flyers are coming. So I looked into it a little bit and found out it was an NHL team. And I said, you know, that's a natural. I should do something with these guys if I can. And uh, down the beach that summer, I met a guy who was a, a writer. His name was Joe Cadillac. Mm -hmm. and he, uh, uh, he wrote for the Daily News. And he applied for and got the job as a director of public relations with the Flyers. So, uh, I was partying with the guy and we're out there, you know, uh, celebrating his new job, having a cocktail or two <laughs> in uh, Margate. And um, I said, do you need anybody to help you? I have a little background. I used to watch and went to different games. So, I mean, I know a little bit about the game. He said, well, I, I don't know. Come to a cocktail party for the Sixers because it was one for basketball. And I went to it and, you know, one thing leads to another. It wasn't a hockey party. It was a basketball party. 
but uh, for the building spectrum you know the right, spectrum right, right. was there yeah so i said uh i can do anything he said well i might need a guy to help hand out stats and write stuff down so I'll, I'll do it yeah and uh that's the way it started okay. i was a press box custodian which meant i made sure a guy sat where they were supposed to and got their stats and things like that and mm -hmm. um i realized early on uh, i was always writing and i missed a lot of goals right <laughs> because the press box that you know where there are tvs all over the place and replays did not exist yeah there wasn't any right none yeah. so um you know once it happened i recapped it once i found out what it was and uh i said to lou scheinfeld who was the uh around the rink at that point was a flyers vp i i'd like to get down there and be the announcer because the guy left yeah and he said well i don't know let's uh see if you what you sound like or whatever. And he arranged a, uh, an, uh, me to go in there and, and say some things and do an audition. And it was when they were adding the third, the third level. Yeah. Yeah. So they had these, you know, 12 by 12 pieces of wood that were put around there and they framed the sand in there for a big crane. <laughs> and I went over and they're like, they cranked it up. So I turned the mic on and I said, hey, this is a very important audition I'm making here. Could you guys give me a break? And ding, 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 they turned the crane down. And Lou said, that's fine. If that doesn't bother you, I know your voice is okay because I heard it in the press box, but right. you got it. So first game, I get hit with a puck bucket full of ice and pucks. Uh, so it was uh, eventful. It was eventful. Yeah, right, for sure. Um, and, and especially for being your first game, too. What, what other way would you would you want that else to go? <laughs> Well, a little, a little softer, I guess, maybe, yeah. but you know, right. hey, good fun. Right. Exactly, um, and you know, again, just going off that, I've I've heard before that, and I, I think Riley Cote mentioned this to you as well that you were like afraid to speak and everything. And um, how did you kind of get over that so quickly? Because it, it's obviously not like an easy, easy thing to do. I guess just practice. I guess practice and uh, getting over the jitters, much as you may have had when you were in that elevator. First time in a, in a big league press box. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember as a freshman in high school having to give a report and getting up the front of the room and totally froze. I couldn't do it. I sat down and, you know, years later, here I was making announcements on a phone. So that's not too bad. You're talking into a phone. You're recapping something's already written down. Right. So you work your way through it. Yeah. And, um, you know, then uh, just sort of develop my own style of doing things, which I try to keep very professional. I'm not a cheerleader, except for the Pico power play, I guess. Uh, but, um, you know, I try to be professional. Our goals are a little better than the opposition's. But I give the opposition guys uh, a crank, too, because, I mean, scoring goals is hard. Right, exactly. Playing in the NHL is hard. Yeah. So, uh, you know, try to be even as I can and, you know, good fun. Right. No, exactly. And, and, you know, it, it – to me, it's interesting that you mentioned that because because most people would just kind of think that it's you know just because the Flyers are home and everything you have to kind of pump more into that, which is which is probably fair. And then you know obviously you know the road team, but you know I, I that's that's very interesting. Just kind of going off of that, um, obviously you started in, in 72, 73, um, obviously a couple of years before the Flyers won the Cup. What were some of your favorite moments from the seventies? If, if there's anything that you can, you know, remember from then and from the seventies, oh yeah, yeah. I, my mind is still there. Come on, give me a break, Chris. <laughs> uh, yes, I uh, uh, remember my first game. I remember the early years. I worked without glass, so right. I get hit a few times with pucks and sticks. And I, I was the same age as the player, so it was oh. when I traveled and I made a few games, games in Canada when there were charters and things of that nature up to New York and and where I could go without too big a deal. And so I got to know these guys, you know, it was, it could go have a beer afterward and whatever. Right. And, uh, but the things I remember the most, I think are, are the relationships that got developed, but the games leading up to the Stanley cup. And, you know, I was fortunate right time, right place. I was one year there and we went to the finals against Montreal and we get beat. And then we were still, we were in it the next year. Because we had uh, guys like Clark leading the way. And, uh, you know, uh, it got to be a situation where, hey, we got a chance here. And then I remember going to game seven or six. It was game six against the Bruins. And um, it was a surreal thing. You know, I mean, holy cow. 
And um, I was in Boston for game four, I think, or maybe it was three. We won a game there. Clarky scored and uh, we won the game and everybody started to say, well, these guys are for real, you know, because of the big bad Bruins and whatever. Right. But uh, at the end of, as we got toward that game with McLeish tipped in the shot from the point and we're winning the game, yeah. then nothing else happens. Mm -hmm. And then uh, someone takes a shot from the point. Our guy goes off one of their pads bounces past um, and Bob Clark picks it up and it's Bobby Orr is behind him now and Clark he's going in and they got a one nothing lead and this is going to seal it he pulls him down so the referee I think it was Art Scove I don't know an eight from the past he calls a penalty on him and Orr is just livid I mean every word you could dream yeah uh, goes out and he's calling <laughs> the ref every name there could possibly be and those guys Happened a lot to them. Nowadays, they got rather use. Right. But, uh, you know, you, uh, we're wound up with a two-minute penalty in the box. And I'm saying to myself, hell, we had the chance here. You know, we could yeah. win this game. Right. We win this game, we're going to win the Stanley Cup. And it went on to win. It was chaos. People jumped over the glass. When the, the cup was presented by a guy, uh, by, I guess, the commissioner at that point, who was sour as could be, didn't like the Flyers. Yeah, Clarence Campbell. With. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Clarence Campbell looked like he ate a lemon before he <laughs> handed the cup to, to Bob and Bob and Bernie were taking it around the ice and uh, with Schultz in front of them, pushing people out of the way because people were everywhere. The glass was low. People could climb over. Security yeah. was at, but I mean, it was just unbelievable. And I remember going in the locker room after and uh, doing some drinking, drinking some, some stuff and having to sip out of the cup and all that good stuff. And that was also chaos. Everybody's friend happened to be in there. And, um, you know, that night uh, was the first game of a box lacrosse league that was brand new. And the Wings played. And the Stanley Cup game was an afternoon game at one. The Wings played at eight. And I had told the owner I was going to be his announcer. Well, I was in bad shape. Uh, but I did the game and then went over to Rexy's after and couldn't even get in down the street. It was all blocked off and cops and everything. So I went around the back, came in through the kitchen and enjoyed it like that. Next day, parade, you know, up Broad Street. We meet. Yeah. The guy from the city comes in, tells us, we're going to just get in these Cadillac convertibles. We're going to drive up to Spruce Street. It'll get crowded then. And, uh, you know, we'll go down and we'll have some ticker tape and Kate will sing and that will be that. Well, chaos, you know. From the time that that we left, and I, I just jumped in a car. I was not going to be excluded. I just jumped in the Cadillac with a couple of the owners, mm -hmm. uh, Fitz Dixon. And, uh, you know, we were in the beginning of the parade, and it was like wall-to-wall -wall people from the yeah. time we, we got out into the street. And just just terrific, you know. I mean, a ticker tape parade, come on. Yeah. The city hadn't seen much going for it. Right, so, exactly, uh, I yeah. Love the Flyers, a lunch pail group that – Hung out with them, drank with them, played hard, beat up guys when they had to be, protected their own. Uh, it was uh, it was a pretty amazing time. Yeah. Now, after that, I wasn't all, I wasn't at Buffalo for the second cup win. Okay, but I celebrated afterward the second cup parade also. Mm -hmm. And I say other things I remember. Uh, I remember that um, we lost to the Islanders on a bad call. Yeah, an eighty. A friend of mine made Leon Stickle. Still mm -hmm. a friend, just the way it is. Yeah. It's too bad that it got made. Unfortunately, yeah. But um, that was a game winner, I guess, right? It was, yeah, the overtime one. Mm -hmm. And um, then the rushing game, which I was right in the middle of. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Right in the middle of all that hijinks and mm -hmm. took some rushing guys, the Pat Stakes for G Stakes, and taught him how to say one wit. And then the guy asked him, um, American or whiz? And they, like, said, they all kind of turned around and they didn't know what was next. So I helped them get along with that. We ate cheesesteaks. And, um, you know, then they walked off the ice the next day. Uh, and Snyder, Ed Snyder, great owner, busted right downstairs and told them there's no money because you know, they hadn't hadn't paid their payment. He and Alan Eagleson, who was a Players Association guy at that point, negotiated the deal that he could pay after the whole series. 
And uh, they didn't like the way they were roughed up here. And Dan Impel always says that uh, Valerie Karmeloff ran into his elbow by mistake. And that's when they left. Uh, but uh, just so, so the Russian game and the Stanley Cup winning game are the two biggest games that I've ever been involved in. Yeah. You know, uh, right. And I did NHL All Star games. You know, I did a few things like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've done some different yeah. sports. I, 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 good I, fun. I, yeah. I think he did the Frozen Four too, right? In 2014. Yeah, I did the Frozen Four when uh, the Ghost was was with yep. uh, Union, mm -hmm. and they won the final. I think seven to three or seven to four. He was plus seven. Yeah. So you know, I mean, hey, this guy's yeah. our guy, right? <laughs> and um, they may have jettisoned him a little early, but that's a GM's call. And um, he's hurt now, so he, he was going to go somewhere. He wasn't going to be where he was. Yeah going to be traded but i don't know whether that'll work for him now but uh, yeah. we'll see what happens but, yeah we'll see you know obviously coming up with the deadline in about a month yeah well stuff's already starting to happen yeah yeah you know? uh mm -hmm. and um we'll see what they come up with i suspect that our lineup will look different come the Most fifth fourth of february i mean you know, who knows who will go where yeah uh guys with big contracts if they can somehow fit people under the cap they mm -hmm. get young kids and draft choices yeah, you know, it's the future you got to look toward because this team's right. not enough, even with right. a great goalie. Right, exactly. No, so, for sure. Uh, you know, and, you know, I, 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 I'm curious. You know, where do you kind of see the see the team now? Just going off of that, like obviously they they need to add some more, and you know they're they're you know nobody's really said it, but they're, they're they are rebuilding. Um, where do you? Well, it's a word see... that doesn't get used, Chris. You know, right? They don't right. like that word, right? Uh, or ticket sales, I guess, right. but. Uh, to interrupt you and, and go on with this while it's still in, in my head and, and mm -hmm. thinking about it, you know, you had what was going to be a promising year. Let's go back two years. You know, you got a, a number one defenseman, Ryan Ellis, coming in. Uh, you got um, Coots having a good year. You got G. Uh, you got um, guys that are going to be your, your stars. Yeah. You know? And uh, now the big stars are hurt. Three guys, you know, I, who knows if Ryan Ellis will ever play again. Uh, and I don't know how you could rip apart a team like that and expect it to be any good. Right. So, uh, but you know what? You get this new coach in here, man, he is a buster, but he gets these guys, these guys believe in him and they realize that it's really their chance. Yeah. So they're working like hell. And, uh, you know, they don't get out work. We played a game against the Blackhawks the other night. Mm -hmm. I was at that and, game. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, Luke Richardson is a great friend of mine. And uh, so I went down to see him beforehand. And he's in a meeting, but he says, give me a minute. And he comes out. We're in the hallway in the laundry room. We're talking. And he says, my team works so hard, you know, all the time. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's something I want to instill in them. I said, well, I'll tell you, Luke, this team works hard the same way so this game might be like nothing happens and he said yes yeah, possibility and they beat us but like for the first period period and a half i mean back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. but yeah it was total nothing ball, happened yeah. and then all of a sudden they got a couple goals and they got an early one in the second i think which was kind of a mistake yeah. uh, you guys make mistakes they're young mm -hmm. they don't get the puck out they don't put it along the boards the, the veteran defenseman knows just put it off the boards midway up Guys can't stop it unless you're Eric Dujardin. He was always great at that. Yeah, and and it, you know, and it's not a mistake. So they regroup again, put the pucks out of the zone. Right. If somebody tries to make a play because they get real good talent, that play doesn't happen. You know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it makes a goal. Yeah. No. Exactly. And you know, for for the team now, and um, you know, especially the the month of January, they had a, they had a pretty good month. They went eight four and two. Um, you know, there, there, there were some good things. And, and I think the biggest thing is just really this year is just figuring out who you can kind of build around. And that's what it seems like they've been trying to do um, for, for at least this season, just kind of uh, just going back a little bit. Um, obviously you, 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 obviously you mentioned uh, Ed Snyder. Um, any favorite moments for Mr. Snyder? <laughs> if you, if you, yeah, there are a couple one, of them. Uh, uh... He always was terrific with me, and uh, you know, um, I I knew him for the whole time he was here. So I certainly called him Ed, mm -hmm. and nobody called him Ed. 
Clark even called him Mr. Snyder. So when I used to see him in the hallway, he'd say, hey, Lou, I'd say, hey, Ed. And the guards, and they're there, like, they kind of look out of the corner of their eye. You know, why did he do that? And right. Just the way it was. Mm-hmm. But uh, he used to call me. I had a phone called the bat phone, you know. When the phone rang, it could be anybody. But when it was something that was screwed up, it normally was Ed. Ed would say, Lou, what the hell's going on? What the, what are they what are they doing there? And sometimes it took the refs a long time to uh get to what was really happening. Because a lot was going on. And I'd give the guy paper and Bob Myers, I remember one time, he said, Louie, give me some paper. So I gave him a pad and pencil and he's looking he's writing stuff down. So he comes over and right before he said to give me everything, my phone rings. I said, Yes. He said, Lou, it's Ed. I said, Hey, just a second. I put the phone down. I get the calls from Myers. I wrote them all down. I pick up the phone. I say, yes, Ed. He says, Lou, he says, something we got to understand here between us. You know, when I call you, put the referee on hold, not me. <laughs> so, I mean, he made his point. I mean, right. he, he, I mean, a great guy, but when he, when he wanted something, you know, he went for it. And, right. uh, same thing. He called one time when, you know, we're doing the the might, mites of the night. You know, the might, the mites are coming on, and I don't know who they are. It's written down in my script, so I start saying, "And the mites tonight are from the here and here and here," and out comes the Ed Snyder youth hockey. Well, Ed's up there waiting because his legacy is going to be, you know, Flyers hockey, Snyder hockey, and kids, which is terrific. We should yeah. talk about that. Yeah. But um, so my phone rings. And he says, Lou, he says, damn it. He says, look, this is Snyder Hockey Kids. That's not, you know, who you said. And I said, Ed, I'm just reading off the script. So he says, who's responsible for that? So I, I said, I'll, I'll call you back. I hang the phone down. I call my boss. I say, hey, I got to throw you under the bus. Ed's looking for your name. He said, no problem. You know, so I call Ed back and I tell him. And, uh, you know, it, 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 he realized it's a mistake. And somebody fouled up, but he would be right on it. He was very, very good like that. Yeah. But what he has done with his legacy in Ed Snyder Youth Hockey and all the people that have taken that, uh, Jim Britt's one of the guys that uh, that really took it early on. And, um, uh, you know, people that 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 took it and, and made it what it is with the five rinks that were in disrepair. Yeah. And Ed paid to get them back to where they should be working with the city. And now the program is such that it's got computer labs and the kids, you know, they have to do their homework. They have to keep their grades up or else they don't play hockey. You know, it's just the way it is. And um, Scott Tharp as as the CEO there has done a wonderful job in taking this from point A to point B. Mm. So, you know, people come in and look at it. I know, um, one of the guys I got to know uh, uh, came in and was talking to us about everything and, and went to some of the outings and the golf and whatever, just to get an idea, you know, how, how it would be with the, with, with his team, with the Rangers. So, um, you know, guys, guys want to take it up and uh, just like the Flyers Carnival, people want to know how that got done so they could start their own. We did a lot of things first here. Like the Pico power play was first, Mm -hmm. you know, and actually, sponsoring something and now it's everywhere right yeah yeah it, it, like you always say the, the, the first energy power play or something like that it's always something like that yeah i was up in uh, allentown on friday for flyers night and i did the ppl power play oh yeah you know, uh-huh. which is their rink and their sponsor for yeah. the first period i was up there and I sat with their owners and had, we had a great time they, awesome. they won the game so i was important yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the phantoms right now are, are uh looks like they're going to be in the playoffs. Hopefully, they can. I hope so. Up. Yeah, it's a good bunch of guys there, and management's mm-hmm. good. And little story, uh, the Brooks brothers who own it, not the Brooks brothers clothing thing, but uh, uh, two guys, um, Rob and Jim. They, they were talking one night, we're having a cocktail, and I said to them, I said, "Yeah, I said I understand how tough it is to." for your players and franchise, because when somebody gets hurt, you know, they don't call up your worst player. They call up your best player. Yeah. So, I mean, that's who's, that's who goes up. And, um, you know, there's good, somebody's probably going to get called up now after all-star break because Mac went down with a broken yeah, jaw. And, yep, and, uh, I'm guessing Allison. he ran into a punch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, so 
we'll see what happens. They're they're playing everybody right now. There's a couple of guys hurt. Yeah. So it depends on on how quick guys get back. But right. I have a funny feeling that somebody's going to wind up playing with I, us. Yeah. I would Why assume, not? Yeah. It's kids. Right. Exactly. And you know, like we saw before, like. Um, you know, they, they've had a couple guys that have, that have come up just, you know, for injury and things like that. And, uh, you know, the, the last game they went with 11 and seven. Um, so, yeah. you know, um, but, you know, just kind of go back to uh Snyder hockey the other day, um, I was driving or I actually, I was on the train. Uh, I was coming home from school. I, uh, right now I, 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 I right now I'm in temple. Uh, I, I live in, I live in Northeast Philly. I actually went to father judge, uh, high school. Um, I'm West Gothic guy, so uh, mm-hmm. we can still yeah. talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, I was coming home from the train, and you know, I like as the car was coming through, I don't know where it was. I think it was around like North Philly, like Bridesburg, but just out of the corner of my eye was a big uh, Snyder hockey logo, and I, I I don't know where it was, but it it was it was a painted mural. It was somewhere, and I was like, man, like like this stuff is everywhere, and like I see it all the time, and um, you know, how, how, how important do you think, you know, obviously you kind of touched on it a little bit already, but how important is that just keeping, you know, Ed Snyder's, you know, obviously his legacy alive and everything, but just making sure that hockey can continue to grow, you know, in, well, in Philadelphia as well. Yeah. Uh, a couple pieces to it. I think the one thing is that, that it will be and is Ed's legacy, mm-hmm. uh, maybe four or 5,000 kids have worked through the program now. Uh, several on the college with scholarships and um, they now have a situation where, you know, uh, we're, we're getting kids abilities through a conjunction with another uh, foundation to pay for college for some of these kids too. We probably wouldn't have had that opportunity, but the captain of the uh, uh, Westchester ladies hockey team, which won the, the title last year was a Snyder hockey person who learned how to play and skate and all, at one of the rinks. So, you know, you, you, you go to golf outings and functions and the kids are there and there's Snyder hockey jerseys and they'll look you in the eye. They all shake your hand. They all introduce themselves. They do the right things. And that's all a result of that. And they're going to do well in life as they move forward. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's important, but also the fact that where do your, where do your customers come from? <laughs> Your future customers come from kids who learn to play, right. you know, uh, be they of any uh, any ethnic background whatsoever. As long as they can qualify and get involved with us, it, it, it works. So uh, all good, all good, 100 yeah. percent plus, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, just, you know, probably the probably the last thing here before we wrap up, you know, the. the one of the main things that I've noticed is ball hockey and I I've played it my whole life. But one thing that ball hockey does is it puts a stick in somebody's hand. Like it gets somebody it. involved and yeah, it doesn't matter if you can skate or not. I, I mean, I've watched hockey my whole life. I've been a Flyers fan for 10 years now. I don't know how to skate. I, I, I tried. I was like Frankenstein on skates. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, 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 that's the one thing that it, that it does. But, uh, but Lou, again, thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, always again always good uh you know obviously hearing your voice at the games and um you know it's it's it it's been a treat for for years now just you know one of the things that i've kind of always loved about going to games was kind of hearing the pico power play and everything else so thanks uh thanks again for doing this i appreciate it well you're you're a kind guy even if you're a judge man you know so uh (laughs) but uh yeah i played soccer in school and father judge used to kick our butt every time we played him you know it's a (laughs) soccer area Right, West Philly was not, you know, mm-hmm. South West Philly. So, but uh, I, I'm I'm happy you asked me to be on the show. Uh, I hope that uh, it, it'll work well for you moving forward, and I'm glad that I was able to contribute. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate it. Right on. Bye bye. Bye.